everyone, welcome to another episode of ClinBiz, where we love connecting with you on the business aspects of clinical trials. So in today's episode, I'd like to talk to you about three overlooked areas uh, for some strategic site selection that will really save you time, costs, and a whole lot of headache. Right? Uh, so many sponsors actually use their investigator sites, um, some of the same sites, over and over. Um, but they do this, they, they, do, they do use um, a lot of the same investigator sites, but they really don't look back at the site, how the site has done, the performance, and a couple of other things to really make an informed um, strategic decision for future site selections. So. Today I wanted to talk to you about some of these things. Uh, we'll focus on three main areas that you can look at and put into practice into your organization today that can really help you make better choices and selections in your future site selection process, all right? So other than very strategic, very specific reasons for going to an investigator site, um, here are some things you should be looking for when you're making your site selection in the future to really be more strategic. So number one is reviewing your site Site's past performance um, and this sounds very simple for some people um, but a lot of sponsors don't put this into place and it's really important to review your site's past performance on your trials um, for your a better indication how they'll do in future ones um, again you can be building this into a database for some type of other site uh, business intelligence um, but it's very important to capture this somehow and actually look back not just capture because I'll say many and most study sponsors actually have this information already um, they know how their sites have performed in the past but it's really about utilizing that data and utilizing that data strategically right so in reviewing your site's past performance some of the things that you can look at well the very first one is how did they do in enrollment um, of course there's many factors that can contribute to enrollment but enrollment is really one of the key performance indicators for how a site has done um, in a clinical trial so very important to look at how they have they enrolled their actual enrollment versus their planned enrollment for that trial and then also capture any comments as to many of the reasons that perhaps the site didn't meet um, that expectation. Perhaps it was really not the investigator site, um, really their fault, but it was something else about the study. It might have been the complexity of the protocol. It might be really it was just difficult to enroll overall or other study issues. But it's really important that you still capture that. So enrollment is a big one. Um, the other piece is what was the quality of their data that they provided? So was it clean data? Was it good data? At the end of the day, was there a a lot of queries perhaps that you needed to resolve with the site on the data they've provided. So very important to know what was the quality of that data that they were providing um, as well. So make a little comment about that or take a box um, in terms of the site performance as to their quality of their data. All right. Um, the other piece also in reviewing the, the site's past performance would be what is the ease of working with the site? How easy is it or how difficult is it to work within this particular investigator site? So just like sometimes it's not easy to work with, with this, a particular study sponsor or a CRO, um, there are some issues as well sometimes with an investigator site that really um, can make or break that relationship. So you really need to still capture there how easy was it to work with that site because at the end of the day, you're still employing resources from a sponsor perspective and a site perspective and a CRO perspective many times as well. Um, and if a site is difficult to work with, if there's many issues around there, you really may end up uh, wasting a whole lot of time for a good performing site or an average performing site, but because you're wasting so many resources and time, um, that really may not pay well at the end in terms of the overall performance of that site. So very important to take a look at these things. Number two that you should be looking into for your strategic site selection in the future is reviewing your site's startup time. So so how did that particular site um, that you've worked with in the past, what were their startup times look like? Right? What did their startup times look like actually? Um, you can look at the overall study startup timeline, you can look at specific pieces um, within the study startup process, but what? how long did that really take? Because really this can again, make or break um, if you're trying to get that site up and running um, to start a study, to wrap up a study, whatever it may be. What was the study startup um, timelines is really a question that you should be asking yourself and your team um, for those future site selections. And you should be capturing this somewhere. Again, most study sponsors have this information. It's just a matter of digging it up, putting it together, aggregating, and making it make all, it all make sense um, for some good business decisions, right? 
So look at the overall timelines. Also look at any unique situations that site may have in terms of ethics committees, um, committee approvals. Perhaps there's a timing to that. They need a particular approval prior to engaging in, let's say, contract or budget negotiations. Perhaps their budgets need to be approved before their contracts can um, you know, go into negotiations themselves, the language piece. Um, perhaps there's they, they need certain things into place before they even can engage in any training related to the sponsor or the protocol or any systems to access. So you really need to capture some of those key things about that site in this you know, type of business intelligence database and actually use it for your future site selection because this will really help um, to dictate which um, sites are really going to be helpful in your particular study that you're working with. Perhaps you need something that's, you know, sites that are going to be quick and up and running. And as you look at all those different factors um, of your that site's performance and their timelines, it may really not be a great fit for that particular study even though they may be, let's say, even a good performing site, right? Um, number three, and this will be the last piece we'll talk about today, particular a piece that I like to talk about is reviewing the site costs, right? For that particular investigator site, what were their costs, you know, what did their costs look like to, to start them up? Um, this is very important because a lot of sponsors don't actually look at this piece when they are going to um, future sites for their selection. Um, so looking at what are their standard costs, what are their overhead costs, um, any specific fees that they're looking like. Again, you don't have to detail out everything, but you need to know what are their average or standard costs, um, overheads and things like that. But most importantly, other than just knowing the costs, is did they perform in accordance with that cost structure. So again, did you pay all that as a study sponsor and have the performance actually matching that in terms of the quality of data they provided, the timeliness of things, and also the enrollment? Um, was everything there matching their costs or did, they, did you really waste this money? Uh, with all this talk about drug pricing that we've had in the recent years, you know, that's going to be more and more of a focus that clinical development costs really stay um, in place or that they, we really cut down on these costs. And this is a very, uh, I would say, an easy area to look at as well and say, you know, are we really what we're investing, you know, in a particular investigator site? Is it really paying off? Again, you may be within fair market value and all those things, which are great, but you really need to also be looking at it from a business um, return on your investment uh, type of question and look at was it really worth it to go to this site for the performance, for um, the quality of the data, for the timeliness of things. Uh, was it really worth it to have paid? I mean, numerous times sponsors can waste, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in, you know, getting up a certain, you know, certain sites and, you know, nothing really coming out of it. So it's very important that going forward, we be more strategic in those decisions regarding site selection. All right. So there you have it. And also just want to say that once you look at these things, you might be surprised at what you start finding out. You may look, see actually um, sites coming up on your list that perhaps weren't top of your list before but that actually you start seeing that they were good performing sites and because they're of their speediness the quality of their data the ease of working with them they actually start getting bumped up on your list uh, for your future strategic site selection all right well thank you so much if you like this video make sure you share out with your network if you like these types of information make sure you subscribe to our newsletter at climbiz.com and of course, I got to tell you that if you like this type of information, uh, make sure you register for the ClinBiz Summit 2020. That's going to be taking place on March 24th through the 26th at the Hyatt Regency in Morristown, New Jersey. And also you can attend uh, via live stream, of course, remotely from anywhere in the world. Uh, we have a great lineup of amazing speakers great sessions. Check out our agenda. You don't want to miss it if you're at all involved in some type of clinical operations, clinical trials overall. Um, you don't want to miss this conference. Uh, it's one of a kind for sure. All right. Thank you so much for watching and until next time. Bye-bye.